Okay, uh, my name's David Disseldorp. I'm from the um, SUSE Labs uh, file systems team, and yeah, I'm here to talk about cooperative compression. Um, so I'll start off with just a, a brief introduction to compression, um, sort of how we use it currently, um, look at some problems or, or challenges we have and um, some opportunities to um, optimize some of the workloads we, we use it in. Um, yeah, I'll do just a, a rough demonstration of just a proof of concept implementation I worked on, um, and then also look at um, where we could take it potentially from, from there. <coughs> so, yeah, very high level bird's eye view of um, compression. So basically we have a um, compression algorithm or application that um, takes a, a set of data and then uh, what we get from that is then hopefully um, some smaller data um, with then some, some metadata um, for the um, compression algorithm to then um, yeah, decompress it at a, at a later stage. So there are a bunch of um, different um, algorithms. I'm not going to sort of go into each one. Um, for today's talk, I'm just going to focus on Z standard, which is sort of the modern um, yeah, standard or modern default, which um, a lot of components are using. It is, um, at least within the operating system itself, used um, yeah, across many tools and um, system components. Um, we have the kernel itself with yeah, separate components like the kernel image and, and modules, um, init RAM FS, um, and of course then file systems, um, which also integrate um, compression. Um, in, in this talk, I'll be yeah, just focusing on, um, for now, uh, RPMs um, or packages and um, ButterFS file system compression. So a quick look um, just at Set so standing compression on a typical uh, VM. So this is yeah mostly just um, tumbleweed based. Uh, actually, I'm actually running mainline kernel. Sorry, um, and in this case, I have um, a ButterFS file system mounted. And we can see down here with this um, compress option. Um, so by default, it uses. Um, Z standard level three compression. Um, and I have then just as a source file for compression, um, I've got here on a RAM disk, um, oops, Vim. So that's around four and a half meg. Um, and we can use, say, the um, uh, Z standard binary to, say, grab that and, and compress it. Um, and here we'll see that it saved yeah, um, just under half the amount of um, storage space um, for the compressed, ver compressed version there. Um, yeah, and then looking at how, how ButterFS would, would handle a, the same thing. Um, so here we can basically just copy that same source file, put it on mount um, test. And if we then whoop, take a look, comp size, there we can see um, yeah, the, how the ButterFS extensor um, appear on disk. Um, so with, with ButterFS, it's um, a little different to um, the um, Z standard utility in that it uses a, a smaller Z standard frame size, so you generally get um, reduced um, compression efficiency. So we're around 62%, um, um, it looks like. Um, so, yeah, uh, a little above um, half the size of the um, uncompressed versus um, the compressed version. So that's, yeah, quick play with Z standard. Um, yeah, then looking at some of the, the challenges or opportunities we have within um, our, our operating system. So as mentioned, we have yeah, a huge bunch of, of utilities which already use um, compression natively. Most of those act independently. Um, so 
yeah, for the case of, say, a, a ButterFS root file system where it's um, compressed, we may get cases, or there are likely going to be many cases where we're, say, um, decompressing something and recompressing it in the file system itself again. So and this is what I'm, I'm focusing on is, is this um, RPM use case where we have um, an RPM package with a payload which is already set standard compressed. Um, if we normally install that into a um, set standard compressed ButterFS file system, we'd then um, uh, decompress that and then recompress it as we write it out to, to the file system, to the root file system. We also have some, I wouldn't say issues, but um, yeah, some interesting traits with, say, um, some of the packages like kernel default. So there we have, um, as mentioned, like the, um, I think it's gzip compressed uh, VM Linux. And um, we have, like the, at least within Tumbleweed, we have set standard compressed kernel modules. And these are then all packaged up in a, a bzip uh, to compressed um, RPM. So, um, yeah, just a, a few sort of inefficiencies there. Um, so what I've been focusing on with, with this project was, um, yeah, uh, avoiding or uh, skipping over some of the uh, decompress, recompress um, functions that we currently have with uh, this RPM workload of installing um, RPMs onto a, a ButterFS file system. <coughs> Ideally, we want to, to avoid that wherever we can. Um, and this has become possible more recently because um, in kernel, they added support for uh, this encoded um, read-write ioctl. So that was mostly added for the um, ButterFS send-receive use case, where um, if you're sending a, a sub-volume from one file system to another, um, you also want to then avoid that um, decompress, recompress um, workload. So it is um, quite um, restrictive in, in its use at this stage. So um, yeah, it's protected by Capsys admin. So um, I think yeah, some of the um, mainline developers were sort of concerned that this would be an easy way for um, uh, regular users to potentially fuzz the, the kernel decompress functionality. Um, yeah, quite a small or relatively small um, maximum set standard frame size, so 128K. Um, th those frames need to be aligned to the file system um, block size, so typically 4K on um, x86-64. Um, and we also need to know, as, as the application issuing those encoded IOs, we need to know things about the Z standard frame, so the um, compressed and uncompressed um, sizes that we're feeding into to the file system. The good thing is that, um, yeah, for us, we handle RPM creation within the, the build service. So we have basically complete control, at least over the, the packages that we ship. So um, we can play some games in, in ensuring um, proper alignment and um, proper sizing of, of the Z standard frames there. So for the proof of concept, I actually picked up um, you know, I started on um, the rpm.org source, so regular RPM code base, um, and yeah, ran into some issues just with um, the levels of abstraction they have for the um, I.O. backend. So I actually picked up then this RPM RS package um, just for the proof of concept, because um, it was a little quicker to sort of get started there. Um, and yeah, had to, had to make quite a few modifications, uh, mostly to do with sort of alignment and um, compression. So um, for alignment, we have um, within RPM, basically we have this um, payload which sits at the end, end of the package. Um, that's a CPIO archive, um, <coughs> which gives us basically these little CPIO headers um, intermingled um, amongst the, the file. Um, data payloads. So we want to make sure that um, this file data is then um, properly aligned um, to a file system um, block boundary. So we, yeah, um, for that I 
I played similar games as what I'd done with Inetram FS in the past, which is sort of to, to zero pad some of the um, file name CPIO entries um, such that we get this, this alignment. Um, yeah, it was currently using uh, a um, Z standard stream API for um, compressing everything that was fed into the, the package. Um, that didn't give the, um, or there were a few, few issues there, so that wasn't um, providing the uh, content length uh, entries within the Z standard frames that we needed to, to determine where we sit within the, the file data or in the uncompressed file data. Um, yeah, and there are also some issues with, with buffering within the, the API itself. So, um, yeah, I mostly just ripped out what was there and um, just had some, or added some manual functionality to, to finally control the, the Z standard frame compression as we, we feed the data into the, the package. Um, and the, the main rule for this was to not diverge from um, the existing RPM format. So um, I wanted to make sure that obviously we're optimizing for a specific use case, but these RPMs still need to work on, say, XFS or wherever else they, they could be installed. So um, for RPM creation, um, yeah, I'm going to use basically the same sources I used before, this um, Vim binary, which compresses quite well. Um, so I'm going to use uh, the proof of concept uh, make RPM binary I have there. Um, so this is just a script around that binary. Um, yeah, it doesn't really tell us much. So we're using um, level 15 compression. Um, ButterFS advertises at least that the um, uh, encoded uh, ioctals need to use or that ButterFS supports uh, 1 to 15 level compression. I'd actually tried up to 19 and it seems to work okay with, with ButterFS, but um, yeah, sort of stuck with what they advertise. Um, so in this case, we're um, yeah, basically using this RPMRS library to uh, create the, the RPM header and um, yeah, uh, do things like sign or um, uh, add a, a um, signature for that header so that it can be verified on the on installation. Um, we generate the um, payload digests, um, and yeah, then it's just a matter of um, ensuring that we get these um, CPIO headers um, within their own set standard frame, and then also the um, Vim uh, binary data also then um, properly aligned within these 128K uh, Z standard frames. So that in the end spits out this, uh, whoops, temp uh, RPM, which we should be able to look at. So you can see it can still be read by uh, the regular um, RPM binary, um, but uh, at this stage, I'll move back to the slides. Sorry about the size, but um, yeah, this is sort of how it looks on disk. So we've taken the uh, Vim binary and um, compressed it, as mentioned, into those 128K Z standard frames within the RPM. It has the CPIO um, archive metadata sitting around it. Um, we have our uh, payload digests as well. So um, yeah, this is a, um, one, one issue with RPM, or at least for this use case, is that um, RPM has the compressed and uh, decompressed uh, digests in the header. So for a case where we want to skip um, decompression, then we'd hope to avoid um, uh, verifying the, um, the decompressed digest at least. Um, but there are some other options there. So um, within Z standard frames, we can use um, checksumming for uh, the, the data which we, we encode there as well. So, um, and as mentioned, we do have the uh, compressed digest, which is, is 
applying for verification. Um, so on the extraction side, um, yeah, um, it's basically then just a matter of um, using the RPM RS library to um, verify the, the RPM um, and, and pass the, the headers. Um, it can give us this um, offset of the payload in the RPM file itself. And then, um, yeah, with this um, proof of concept, it's uh, then a matter of basically stepping through the uh, Z standard compressed payload, grabbing those frames, and then uh, writing them out to, to the ButterFS file system with this um, encoded write ioctal. Um, so there are still some cases where manual decompression is needed. Um, so for cases like um, very small frames, um, ButterFS will um, refuse to, to accept that. Um, so in that case, we need to then uh, manually decompress on uh, within the application and, and feed in the uh, decompressed um, buffer. Um, yeah, so we after we've basically extracted that CPIO payload um, into a um, ButterFS compressed file, we can then pass the, the archive itself and uh, ref link um, uh, the uh, file extents from, from that um, archive directly into the uh, file destinations using just the um, uh, Rust's IO copy, which calls the copy file range this call. So, um, so I have install RPM here. Um, that's finished off, but um, where are we? Yeah, we can see it, it verifies the signature within the um, within the RPM header. Um, we we detect that um, we're extracting the RPM onto a, a ButterFS file system, so um, we can see that or hope that um, encoded I/O is supported by the file system, um, and then we start yeah walking through those uh, frames, writing them out to the um, staging. Um, CPIO archive, which um, is is here, um, and then after we've got that staging CPIO archive, as mentioned, we then ref link the um, extents for the uh, Vim binary directly into the installation path, which in this case is um, uh, over here. And yeah, we can look so again at comp size to see uh, the makeup of those those files. So um, that should work. So there we can see that we've got um, yeah quite a significant um, space saving. So under half the size for the um, Vim binary as it resides on on disk here. Uh, that's because we've used the higher Z standard level um, compared to we're using uh, level 15 here rather than level three, so um, we have slightly better compression ratio. Um, we do have some uncompressed extents as well, as mentioned. Um, yeah, I think it's for the the trailing um, uh, I/O on the uh, Vim binary. It's it's undersized for ButterFS, so we then manually um, decompress that and um, feed it into the file system. Uh, we can also actually. I guess I'll leave it. At, oh yeah, oh, just just to show that it's actually uh, not throwing away data. Uh, yeah, there you go. So um, the. Uh, file data as we read it off the file system matches um, our original source binary, so we haven't corrupted anything. <laughs> uh, and yeah, this is sort of how it looks. So, um, as mentioned, we're verifying the, the signature, um, uh, feeding it into this uh, staging um, CPIO archive on the ButterFS file system, and then 
um, extracting in place or ref linking the um, data straight into the installation path. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the proof of concept. Um, I think in terms of yeah, judging whether this, this would work um, for Slayers, for, for Tumbleweed, I think it does prove that it's, it's viable. Um, yeah, I think obviously I need to, to re-implement or finish um, an implementation in the um, rpm.org um, repository. There's a heap more work just in terms of um, yeah, catching some of the corner cases, um, benchmarking. We obviously want to show that this is um, yeah, something useful for, for customers and for the community. Um, yeah, some kernel changes as well. So um, it would certainly help if um, on the application side we didn't need to know so much or, or have so much intricate knowledge about the, the Z standard frame. So, potentially returning some of that information from, say, the um, IOCTL call might be, be helpful. Um, there's also, um, so AFALG, the um, uh, special socket, which is um, available for exposing um, the kernel's crypto API. So I think I've seen some um, patches to also provide support for uh, the kernel um, compression modules as well. Um, uh, there was also some, some security concerns around um, exposing that, so um, it's, it's not there for now, but could potentially be helpful just in terms of avoiding linking to, say, the, the use space binary when we have, have everything in kernel already. And then also moving from this to, to other formats, so um, yeah, containers, I think they're tar-based, but they could also be using um, Z standard, and we should be able to play the same um, alignment games um, which are needed for for handling it in basically the same way. So, yeah, um, if you want to look at the, the source, and yeah, there's a couple of repositories repository, there, um, and that's it. Any questions? <laughs> I have several. Um, when you make a butterfly file system with Z standard uh, compress option, the, will it compress every data that, do, that goes through the encoded write IOCTL? So through the encoded write, yes, it will take it as is. Anything that even, even if the compressed size is larger than the uncompressed one? No. So, no. sorry, yeah, there, there are a bunch of... Um, so size of the, the I.O. itself, if it's under or over um, the required sizes, then it will reject it. And also, yes, if, um, if, the, uh, if the decompressed size is smaller than the compressed size, then, yeah, that's also a case where it will yeah, that, reject it. Yeah, that's an error. But, yeah. uh, but the, the, uh, the compression, when you compress it, and there's a chance that the compressed buffer might be larger than the, the input buffer. Mm where um, you have uh, uncompressible data. And I was wondering if you handle this, like, uh, do you write it as is, as in uncompressed, or do you just reject it? No, so within RPM, we still need to, um, uh, yeah, basically not diverge from the RPM format. So we need to write it uh, as, ah, as RPM can then decompress it. But then on the extraction side, we need to detect this case, which we can with from the frame header. We can see, okay, the content length is this, and it's less than the um, frame size. So, okay, we need to manually um, okay. decompress that and, and write it regularly. And regarding the large frame size, um, is that a Z standard limitation? Large frame sizes? No, that's... Um, so, butter no, I mean, the uh, 128K you yeah. mentioned. That's, that's a ButterFS restriction, so, oh, okay. which does make sense for file systems because um, basically if they have, say, a, a read or a write within an individual frame, then uh, they have to take that frame and uh, decompress it as a whole. So for, for random, small random workloads, um, having a relatively small frame size makes sense. But mm -hmm. I think for this, um, where we have you know, large binaries, um, it would be helpful if we had some flexibility from mm -hmm. so ButterFS. Right now, so you're... you're you're parsing every 128 block 
128k blocks and compressing them. You're not buffering them and then compressing them as a whole. No, no, it's um, because we want to be able to feed those frames straight into ah, okay. FS. So, on a read. Yeah. So, uh, um, which read? <laughs> when, uh, no, I mean, uh, when, when, you're, when you write, you, you're compressing... Uh, when I write the RPM? Uh, yeah, or? when you write to... When you call the uh, encoded write yeah. by Octal, you, how do you, do you compress the, the buffer, the input buffer? You parse as, as separate blocks or just as a whole, the whole buffer, the whole binary? No, that's being compressed within the RPM creation. So the frame, is, frame is, is already there ah, uh, okay. within RPM itself. Okay. So we have just okay. regular Z standard, com or somewhat okay. modified um, regular RPM Z standard compression. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So um, is there a similar application when you like pair a file system with compression with ZRAM or so compressed memory? Is there, is there some... So ZRAM, you're then another layer yeah, yeah. under the file system, so... Uh, so, so there's uh, nothing existing that... I'm not, I'm not aware of memory. anything where that's possible. Hi, I have a question. Uh, could you please repeat how is the signature verified when the RPM is installed or the signed data are in the compressed form or decompressed form? So the, the signature just covers the RPM header, um, but the RPM header contains the digest for the payload. So that makes sure that the payload can't be tampered with. And a payload in a compressed form or in the... It has both. So it has the payload digest uh, so the compressed, uh, so the digest of the compressed data as well as the digest of the um, uncompressed data. So upon installation, data. upon installation, you verify the header signature, and you trust the content of the header that it matches the data. Uh, I'll be honest. In the the proof of concept, I verify the header signature, and then I don't do anything with the digest at this stage. Um, so it we can easily um, verify the. Um, compressed uh, data digest, yeah. but um, yeah, che checking the decompressed uh, digest would not make sense because yes. then we'd need to decompress everything and yeah, we're, we're trying to avoid that but in the in first memory, place. Yeah. So. Sorry? You could, you could do it in memory. Yes, memory. true, but still something we'd prefer to avoid. I mean, as, as mentioned, so we have within Z standard frames, we can also use, I think it's XX hash 64 for um, yeah, integrity checking. So it should be possible. Actually, I haven't checked with um, Chu. I would, had some questions for um, uh, the ButterFS engineers just regarding whether that's used or ignored within um, compressed file systems. Because uh, ButterFS obviously has its own separate um, checksum for, yeah. for extents. Hi. Um, it's actually pretty exciting because two years ago I made some experiments with RPM as well with the payload and reflinking it. So it would be interesting to see how we could um, combine the two ideas. But I didn't work with the assumption to keep the payload stable. So actually this, this CPIO this, uh, seems to be unnecessary, like legacy crap in RPM. It is. Yeah, because well, pretty much all of the data is already in the header itself, or it can be stored in yeah, the Yeah, exactly. RPM the header, header has the offsets yeah. and the sizes and, yeah. and the names. And so, yeah. so in my proof of concept, I gave up on this idea to have CPIO mm. and just aligned the payload on 4K boundaries. And then you can basically stream on RPM to disk and then ref link it so you mm. never have a decompression step. So yeah, well, that's, that's what's happening here. Yeah. It's just, yeah, the CPIO metadata needs to be sort of tinkered with a little bit to, to yeah, ensure maybe, alignment. Maybe so. we can get uh, my prototype and your prototype a bit aligned and then have a compressed, reflinkable payload that can be streamed. Uh, I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's, I mean, that's what I demonstrated here. And we do have that. So for uh, Dracket CPIO, um, which I worked on, that also does the same sort of tricks in terms of um, aligning so that we can reflink for um, in a FS creation. Okay. So I used uh, BusyBox as another RPM implementation there ah, okay. in C that uh, is easy to modify. Ah, cool. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. <laughs> no, <you know. laughs>
<laughs> אבל כוסה. A certain social network company that uses a lot of butterfest has a similar approach where they just yeah take butterfest send receive streams and the, uh, in the RPM and then do the encoded write that's why they have the encoded write in there four and RPMs as well four RPMs oh, okay so that's somewhere on github I because I, I saw that they'd actually proposed upstream for RPM at uh, change to the payload format which had sort of like chunking yes um, and that sort of integrated with um, uh, d uh, differential RPMs as well I think as well which is something I've neglected at this stage so yeah I'd, I'd need so to take a probably closer look. you three could just link together and sure yeah I'm probably over time now I guess <laughs> Okay, well, ping me afterwards, otherwise. Thanks.